Every single winter, Canada achieves an engineering marvel that defies belief. It builds over 6,000 kilometers of temporary highways. These are not paved roads. They are massive structures crafted entirely from ice and snow, designed to support trucks weighing over 40,000 kilograms. For a heavy truck carrying 40 metric tons of fuel, the ice beneath it must be at least one meter thick. This is not naturally formed ice, it is engineered, layer by frozen layer. These frozen highways can be wide enough for two large trucks to pass, often 30 to 60 meters across, stretching across vast frozen lakes and rivers. But what happens when these incredible frozen roads start to melt? And how do engineers fight against a warming world to keep them open? For decades, accessing Canada's remote northern regions was a monumental task. Moving goods and equipment into these isolated areas presented a huge hurdle for industries like mining, especially from the 1930s to the late 1950s. Airplanes, while capable, were simply too costly for transporting heavy supplies and large machinery needed for development. This economic challenge spurred a unique engineering solution. The answer came in the form of cat trains. These were powerful caterpillar tractors pulling long lines of freight-laden sleighs across the frozen landscape. This was the precursor to the vast ice road networks we see today. Back in those days, workers recalled ice being consistently thick, often around 100 centimeters, making these early journeys more predictable. The need for cost-effective logistics in such a challenging environment drove this innovation, showing how economic pressure can lead to truly unique engineering solutions. The concept of dedicated ice roads began to formalize around the mid-1950s, with ice roads specifically noted as significant in 1956. These routes quickly became crucial lifelines, connecting isolated indigenous communities and remote industrial sites to the south. But building a temporary highway on ice is a meticulous process that begins long before the first snowflake falls. It is a continuous, high-stakes battle against nature, a race against the clock each season, and a larger, existential struggle against a changing climate. Route planning for these frozen highways requires advanced technology. Engineers use tools like synthetic aperture radar, known as SAR, satellites to help the landscape. These satellites can see through total darkness and cloud cover, using microwave signals to identify critical ice characteristics like its thickness, type, and surface condition. This allows engineers to pinpoint the best routes across frozen lakes and rivers, carefully avoiding dangerous areas with strong water currents or shallow sections that are prone to fracturing. On land, the initial preparation involves challenging terrain, often including muskeg swamps and permafrost, which is permanently frozen ground. Crews use snowmobiles and specialized low-ground pressure snowcats to pack down the initial snow layer. This crucial process, often called driving frost into the ground, helps the underlying soil freeze more deeply and quickly, creating a solid base. Construction can only begin when the ground temperature reaches a critical threshold, typically minus 5 degrees Celsius at a depth of 30 centimeters below the surface. This is a key safety and operational benchmark. For example, Manitoba's Northern Winter Roads Manager tracks what are called freezing degree days, which is a cumulative measure of sub-zero temperatures. Light construction equipment can safely begin work only when this figure reaches 300 freezing degree days. Once the initial ice is thick enough to support light machinery, typically around 10 centimeters for walking and 18 centimeters for a snowmobile, the insulating layer of snow must be removed. Snow acts as an insulator, slowing ice growth, so it must be cleared. Snow cats, equipment with wide blades up to 6 meters across, plow and push snow aside. Some specialized groomers, like the snow blaster, can even remove snow to a specific depth to encourage faster ice growth. This is where the true engineering of the ice surface begins. Crews use large floater trucks to spray massive amounts of water onto the cleared ice surface. This water freezes, adding new layers of ice. 
This process is repeated, allowing each layer to freeze solid before the next is applied. This artificial thickening builds the ice to the required load-bearing capacity. The construction process is not static. It is a constant battle against natural forces, showing that ice road engineering is about maintaining a dynamic equilibrium, constantly adapting to changing conditions rather than simply building a fixed structure. Not all ice is equal. Clear blue ice is the strongest and most reliable for load bearing. White opaque ice, often formed from snow, has more air content and is weaker. Gray ice indicates thawing and is considered unreliable. Engineers must ensure the effective ice thickness is composed of good quality, well-bonded ice. For example, a light truck weighing less than 5,000 kilograms needs at least 38 centimeters of ice. For a fully loaded truck carrying over 40,000 kilograms, the ice must be at least one meter thick. The load-bearing capacity of ice is often calculated using formulas like Gold's formula, which shows that the maximum allowable load is proportional to the square of the ice thickness. Over creeks and smaller waterways, where solid ice might not form naturally or be strong enough, engineers construct snow bridges. Crews jam huge piles of snow into the creek beds using grooming machines. This snow is allowed to settle for about 36 hours, then flooded with water. The flowing water underneath helps to naturally shape the freezing snow into a strong, culvert-like structure. For particularly weak or problematic sections, like shoreline crossings, advanced reinforcement techniques can be used. Historical examples include embedding logs, rice straw mats, or even branches and twigs within the ice layers. More modern, experimental methods involve cutting grooves and laying synthetic materials like fiberglass cables, then flooding them to freeze into the ice. This can significantly increase the ice's strength, allowing thinner ice to bear heavier loads. For instance, Soviet inventors proposed that reinforced ice only 200 millimeters thick could withstand loaded lorries, and 500 millimeters thick could handle railway trains. Safety is paramount on these unique highways. Ground penetrating radar, or GPR, systems like IceMap are towed behind vehicles to provide continuous, real-time ice thickness measurements. This is a huge improvement over traditional ice coring, which can miss thin spots. The GPR system can measure at intervals as small as 5 centimeters and sounds an alarm if thin ice is detected. But the Canadian Arctic is experiencing warming at roughly triple the global average. This drastic temperature increase is directly threatening the viability of ice routes. Between 1979 and 2017, the potential operational days for ice roads in the Canadian Arctic decreased by an average of 10.17 days per decade. This is an amplified feedback loop. Warmer temperatures lead to less snow and permafrost thaw which, in turn, makes ice roads harder to build and maintain. Winters are becoming shorter and warmer, leading to unpredictable conditions, including unseasonable rain in February and March. For example, in November 2023, average temperatures were 2 degrees Celsius warmer than the previous year, which can delay the critical minus 5 degrees Celsius ground temperature threshold by as much as 11 days. Less snow cover, which acts as the asphalt of these roads, means crews have less material to build with. Warmer conditions also lead to rougher roads, collapsing snow bridges, and increased truck maintenance. A recent study found that a further rise of just 1.5 degrees Celsius in average temperatures would render 90% of existing ice roads unsustainable. When ice roads are impassable, remote communities must rely on costly air transport for essential supplies. Flying fuel alone costs approximately 69 cents per liter more than trucking it over ice roads. For Ontario First Nations, this could result in an additional cost of $13.8 million per year if winter roads are unavailable, considering they collectively move about 20 million liters of fuel annually by winter road. This increased reliance on air transport strains community budgets and impacts the affordability of goods, from food to building materials. This reduced capacity then forces reliance on more carbon-intensive air transport, 
potentially contributing to further warming, creating a challenging cycle. The unreliability of ice roads directly affects the quality of life in remote indigenous communities. It exacerbates existing housing crises, delays the delivery of critical building materials, and disrupts access to medical appointments and cultural activities. Many communities urgently need permanent, all-season roads, but they cannot afford to build them themselves. Costs can run into hundreds of millions of dollars for each community. Building permanent roads in the Canadian North presents immense engineering challenges. Much of the terrain is underlain by permafrost, which is permanently frozen ground. As temperatures rise, this permafrost thaws, causing the ground to subside and become unstable. Thawing of ice-rich permafrost can lead to significant ground subsidence and slope instabilities, threatening the structural integrity of any permanent infrastructure. Constructing all-season roads, especially for resource development like mining, raises significant environmental concerns. For example, developing the Ring of Fire mining area in northern Ontario, which holds an estimated 1.8 billion tons of carbon in its peatlands, could release massive amounts of greenhouse gases if disturbed. First Nations leaders emphasized that any development, including permanent roads, must have their consent and respect their traditional territories and ways of life. The ingenuity involved in building and maintaining Canada's ice roads is truly astonishing, a testament to human adaptation in extreme environments. But as our climate changes, these frozen lifelines are becoming increasingly fragile. The future demands innovative engineering solutions, careful planning, and a deep understanding of both the environment and the communities these roads serve. If you found this journey into Canada's melting highways fascinating, hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into incredible engineering feats, and let us know in the comments what other engineering marvels you would like us to explore. Do not forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video.